are you ready to find out about Japanese schools? Hi guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Cam. I currently live in Japan where I do lifestyle and traveling videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and turn on that post notification bell that way you'll never miss another video. And without further ado, let's jump into today's video. So this video is actually a continuation of the last video. And if you have not yet seen it, go ahead and click right here to see that teaching in Japan video. And in this video, we'll be focusing on what happens inside a Japanese school. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. So one major question that a lot of people ask when they hear that I teach in Japan is, how are the kids? I bet that they are well behaved. Oh my God, I, I would love that opportunity to teach overseas because the kids in America, the kids in X place, uh-uh, they're so bad, they're so rude. Well, that's the first thing. Kids are kids, regardless of where you are. So just like how it is in your country, here in Japan, you have good kids, you have bad kids, you have trouble kids you have all kind of kids whatever it is that you're experiencing or what you're seeing in your country it's here as well so your best bet is just to approach it as it is understanding that kids will be kids they're going to be childish things they're not militant it, you're gonna they're gonna play around if you give them the chance so they're gonna crack jokes they're gonna do all the things that you did as a child it's no different so what you'll have to do is you'll just have to approach those kids to where they're at so if it is that you have a child that is shy you can't act the same way with that shy kid as you would with a child that's energetic and ready to go and just ready to converse with you you're going to have to change your teaching style your teaching methods your communication style to adjust to your audience the child that's in front of you um, and that's with any job dealing with the public whether it be in teaching whether it be in customer service what even in your relationship guys you alter the way how you speak depending on the audience communication 101 as you guys can see here these are the junior high school kids in my neighborhood and they're headed home and on their way home or to school they're boisterous they're loud they're talking it doesn't bother me again they're being kids and they're going home it's neither here nor there for me it's fine so the students just like the teachers and visitors that visit any Japanese school they too have to change from their outdoor shoes to their indoor shoe and as you guys see from that previous clip unlike in uh, America uh, the kids actually get to school by walking in junior high school they normally go to school like zoning so they typically walk to school now elementary and junior high school they walk to school in high school you'll find that kids either take the bicycle or they take a train or bus to get to school but in junior high school they're still walking so once they walk to school and they get there they'll have to change from their outside shoe which is normally a sneakers that they're wearing to their indoor shoe now they're provided with lockers as you guys can see right here and that's where they'll go ahead just like the process from last week they'll go ahead and slip in their outdoor shoe and take out their indoor shoe now one cool thing to note so in this locker area you'll see that each each area of the locker is is separated by grade so you'll see first grade second grade and third grade I know you're probably wondering first grade second second grade third grade I thought we were talking about Japanese junior high school we are so this is also another thing in Japan so instead of saying grade 7 grade 8 grade 9 what they do is grade 1 grade 2 and grade 3 but we're still talking about junior high school so you'll hear Ichinensei, Ninensei, Sanensei so grade 1 grade 2 and grade 3 okay and uh, once you're in there, then you have grade one, one, grade one, two, grade one, three, and those are the classes. So at my school, I told you guys that is a bigger school. So first graders will have their section of the locker. Second graders will have their section of the locker. And then third graders will have their section of the locker. And then it's further broken down by classes. So each class for a large school is going to run around 40 kids. So you'll have 40 lockers in one class that, and then once that is done, the next 40 lockers will be grade one one 40 lockers grade one two 
four the lockers, grade one, three, four the lockers, and so on until they get to the second grade and they continue that process. Now, you really don't have to worry your head about that. You're really not going to be around there, but I'm just telling you so you could be familiarized with it. The next thing to note is these shoes that they're putting on, as you guys saw, I wear Crocs at work. However, the kids have a special shoe that they wear in junior high school. And these shoes, as you guys are seeing here, is it at the sole of the shoe they each have different color and the color of the sole of the shoe is correlated to the grade in which the child is in so one school like at my school you have yellow blue and green so if you see a child in a yellow shoe it means that they're a first grader if you see a child in a blue shoe they're a second grader if you see them in a green shoe they're a third grader and those colors may change depending on the school that you're at so my school is yellow blue green you might have yellow blue red it doesn't matter all you have to focus on is asking what color is assigned to what grade that's all you need to know and all that does is it helps you to know if you see a child in the hallway or if you see somebody doing something you can look at the sole of their shoe oh that's a second grader why are they on the first grade hall or whatever it may be so you'll you'll just know it just helps the teachers and the school to kind of understand like where each child belongs belongs to so that's pretty cool now guys when it rains I'm telling you to avoid the area of where those shoes are if you can let me tell you about stinky it's so smelly that's why you have all those air fresheners I hate going back there when it rains our rainy season oh my god it's things like think about it 800 and something student shoe all piled in one place it's wet from them walking to school it smells so bad but yeah uh, it, it's okay it's not a part of the journey it's not a part of the process you just walk quickly past that side everybody knows it smells now you have masks for corona so it kind of helps no you still smell through it i'm sorry so now that you know the process of the kids getting inside the school, let's go ahead and jump forward to see what inside a Japanese classroom would be like for you to effectively teach in Japan. Now this is going to be a junior high school classroom. It's a little bit similar to a elementary school classroom. Many of the things are the same. Now I want to note that based on the area that you are and the demographics of that area, your classroom might not have all these equipments that you're seeing here, but on at majority of the schools, you'll find the same equipment like I'm going to be showing you or the same setup of this classroom. So in junior high school, the kids stay in their homeroom for the entire day with the exception of the classes of PE and uh, IT, music, uh, stuff that you normally have to leave your class with. But math, English, social studies, the kids are going to be in that central room at all times. And the teachers are the ones that are rotating while the kids stay in that class uh, so what you'll find is that the homerooms or the classroom for each grade is going to be decorated and it's normally decorated with the children work as you guys can see here now this is from their calligraphy class that they were practicing writing and this was a competition for the best three messages that was written so after it was put up, um, the kids voted and they selected the best three work. So what you'll find is outside the classrooms and inside the classrooms, the homeroom teachers will decorate them with the different artwork or different exercises that the kids did for the day or the week or the month just think of it like you ever been to somebody's house where they have children and on the refrigerator they have their artwork or they have their reports and stuff like that is the same thing outside of the class you'll find documents where they write about places that they want to go in the summer and there's the star festival you'll see them outside with their wishes written on stuff so the homeroom teacher kind of just caters to what's happening in the student's life and then showcase that what they're doing inside the class and outside and this is why you're seeing this calligraphy paper inside the classroom so the classroom is just like any basic classroom which is a room right and it has two doors uh that the kids can enter and leave from and like i said 
earlier, there's around 40 kids in each class at my school. So the kids are arranged seats and the, these seats are rotated. I'm not sure if it's every week. I can never tell when the seats are rotated or why it's rotated, but sometimes I'll go to a class today and I'll see them the next day or something like that and the seats are rotated everyone has changed so I'm not sure why and when they do it um, but the seats are assigned and they're rotated the kids all have numbers so each child is uh, assigned a number so you don't have to worry about knowing their name so much this sounds bad and I don't like to do it um, I hope you'll take the extra step of learning their names and if not on the teachers desk there is a seating chart that's on the teachers desk with the students names but of course that's in Japanese so and it changes each time when uh, the seating arrangement has changed so unless you know how to read Japanese you won't know the child's name by reading that um, paper that seating arrangement so what you can do the number is also assigned to it so you could say number one or number 25 or number 30 and then you could go that route and you pick up these tricks we'll talk more about these when we start talking about different lessons or games that you can use within the classrooms and you'll see why those numbers are important each classroom as well has a television of course a blackboard uh, that's the next thing most of the classrooms in my school and all the schools that I have taught in are blackboards so if you have allergies or anything like that i'm sorry uh, but again these are just my experiences i do have uh, like in my special needs class they don't use a blackboard it's a whiteboard there but all the schools that i have been to and the schools that i have taught it has been blackboards uh so sorry about that so there's your standard blackboard guys and if you guys are looking clearly on this blackboard you'll realize that it's curved so it's not flat on the wall it comes off the wall some and I think that's really cool another thing to note is these blackboards are actually magnetic and this is going to help you tremendously in your lessons because whether you're in elementary school or you're in junior high school or high school the you will have to demo the lesson and with demoing the lesson sometimes you'll have a big printout of your worksheet or you'll have new words and you're putting it on the blackboard with uh, flashcards so having the blackboard being magnetized is really really great you just go ahead boom you snap something on the board and that's it you don't have to worry about it so that's really cool along with those curved features on the end that way the kids are able to see but with the chalk and the dust they do have these cool dusters now i don't remember having this i was born in the 90s so at that point they were kind of like transitioning from the blackboards to the whiteboards but i remember when i was in elementary school that like knocking the dusters together but they have a little sucky thing that you could just turn it on and you just suck that eraser so it kind of helps if you have allergies and stuff it won't be too bad And you'll also see like cleaning supply where you could like dust the the chalk away and don't worry after each class so once the previous class have left the kids all have roles in what they're supposed to do in taking care of their classroom so once you get to the class if there is writing on the blackboard and you need to start preparing your board for your lesson you could just go ahead and be like the blackboard needs to be clean or you could just clean it yourself but if you have allergies you might not want to do that so you could just have them clean the blackboard for you me i don't really care it depends on my mood i'll ask them to clean it or i'll just do it myself it's up to you so also in the back of the room you'll see a cabinet and that cabinet is going to have that's where their cleaning supplies are the broom and the swiffer is back there 
and their dust cloth because again the kids are responsible for cleaning the classrooms in Japan there are custodians at the school however the custodians are only allowed to clean the grounds of the school along with the bathrooms of the school they do not clean within the classrooms the homeroom teacher and the students are responsible for that so before the kids leave for the day they'll go ahead and sweep their classroom whoever is on duty and make sure the classroom is neat and tidy for the next day I have yet to go to a school where I don't see a television uh, so the television you could go ahead it's uh, you can go ahead and connect your PC to that so when I'm playing games like Jeopardy or who wants to be a millionaire I'm going ahead and attach my PC and then I'm mirroring the screen to the TV that way it's a bigger screen that everyone can see you can also do it with the tablet if your school allows you to use the tablet and when I say allow I know it sounds crazy so I Again, each situation is different each school is different when it comes to technology and the classroom Japan is slowly adapting and changing uh, in today's world it's becoming more frequent but when I first got to Japan technology in the classroom was still iffy it's still a little bit of a push or initiative to try to start having more technology in the classroom we can go into that on the next video i'll dive deeper into using technology in the classroom when we talk about like the lesson plans and or having your first demo lessons and stuff like that so also at my school there's this storage box like a USB kind of which is the main frame is in the teachers lounge where I can upload things to to that mainframe and then it's on that box so I don't have to walk with my computer so every day any class that I go to I can just go ahead and hit a particular file and my images or my worksheet or whatever it is that I have stored on there is accessible wherever I am on that compound which is really cool and that's also where the music is stored so you could go ahead and play the songs and stuff like that also along the back side of the classroom you're seeing those cubbies so each student is allotted a cubby and in their cubby some students keep their books some students keep their gym shoes so yeah i know it sounds crazy so right now we're talking about three different shoes so you have your outdoor shoe you have your indoor shoe and they also have to have their gym shoe so it's three different shoes that they have so whatever it is that they need they'll get it from that cubby before class and they're supposed to be sitting by the time the bell rings however you know again kids will be kids sometimes they may forget something so they'll ask you hey can i go in the back and grab something from out there and you just be like okay sure and they just go grab what they need and that's it so it's cold now it's winter guys and the kids in japan wears uniforms the girls are still wearing their skirts despite it being so cold so what you'll see a lot around the schools is you'll see the girls and they'll have like throw blankets and they'll cover their legs with it because they're so cold so you'll see like throws in the classroom yes there is central air and there is central heat in the classroom however Japan is pushing a big SDG initiative and especially my school my school has been the role school for the SDG initiative which means that that when it's summertime we don't turn on the AC until we have to when I say that classroom be funky and then when it's winter time we're not turning on the heat um, until it's like unbearable cold so there is the the heat and there is AC but it doesn't get turned on until like it absolutely needs to so you'll see the girls covering up with their throws covering their legs and whatnot also one big thing the the pandemic did push was the move on uh, introducing technology in the classroom for Japan so one thing that did happen out of the pandemic is that all the students were allotted a laptop so right here what you're seeing this is where the laptops are stored and each each laptop is numbered and assigned to a child they don't get to take home the laptops so it just stays at school for them to do their work so for lunch the teachers do eat with the students so at the teacher's desk you'll find uh, chopsticks you'll find band-aids you'll find 
wipes anything that you can think of that those kids will need the teachers will have those supplies for them and in addition to that you'll find like card games there and why does that happen remember I was telling you last week that it was 10 minutes for lunch and then the kids have break time after where they can play well in that break time the kids can then play with cards or they draw on the board or stuff like that just to entertain themselves or they go outside and play sports oh my god so I almost forgot about our handy dandy projector so you also have I know it sounds so old school right but it does come in handy um, I have used the projector several times I forgot to tell you guys about that there is the projector so now that you guys know exactly what is inside a Japanese classroom come back next week where you could actually get an idea of your demo lesson and what it will be like for your first day in a Japanese classroom I'll see you next time thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe share and turn on your post notification bell that way you'll never miss another video see you bye